In this month's used PC parts hunt, we picked up an i3 system for 100 Australian dollars, which is about 77 US dollars. However, inside it had a P55 UD3R motherboard from Gigabyte. And since this motherboard was literally like the best P55 motherboard I've seen in 2017, I decided to pull it out and use it for a later comparison, where I'm gonna be comparing four cores from different time spans. Though now this PC was missing a motherboard, I decided I would do something crazy since the only part that I didn't like in this build was the power supply, which is a next gen 600 watt power supply with only 25 amps. And now when you see a power supply like this, seriously do yourself a favor and do not use it. It is actually dangerous to use something like this. It's a really crappy power supply. They over advertise the watts when really what you're looking for is a strong ampage on the 12 volt line. If you have this from a decent manufacturer, you should be good to go. But if you don't use a power supply like this one, which is called a next gen, you not only run the risk of giving your PC parts bad voltage, but also run the risk of blowing up the power supply if there's too much power being requested from it. And in that case, when that blows out, you can also risk blowing out your PC parts too. So a little pretty disclaimer before we get on into this video, don't use no name power supplies, please. Though with all that aside, since I had a budget motherboard off AliExpress, a terrible power supply, a cooler with no mounting system, I thought I'd do a little experiment. Why not zip tie a cooler onto this motherboard with a 2500K and see how high this power supply and all these components could overclock this system. And so we began overclocking and we started off with a healthy overclock of 4.3 gigahertz at 1.3 volt. And what I found surprisingly was that it did work. This was in a 25 degree ambient environment and it was actually doing pretty well. I think we got into around 70 degrees max temperatures after a 10 minute stress test. So this thing was ready to game at 4.3 gigahertz. However, we were gonna take it higher than this. So it was then we rebooted the system upped it to 4.5 gigahertz, and then surprisingly, it passed at 4.5 gigahertz as well. This was at around 1.34 volt. Keep in mind, this power supply is supplying terrible voltage and the MOSFETs on this motherboard aren't the best. So I was actually surprised that this thing was kicking it at 4.5 gigahertz, and it did so with reaching a maximum temperature of 90 degrees. So we were pretty much reaching our maximum threshold at these voltages and at these overclocks. However, we decided just to try 4.7 gigahertz, see if it would even boot. And it was at this stage I realized I'd hit a brick wall, it would fail to boot, it just gave me error messages. I did get to a blue screen, however, with about 1.39 voltage. I didn't wanna take it any higher as this power supply would probably blow up at this stage. I did actually smell some smoke, a bad smell. Now, if you guys are using a cheap power supply and if you're in a pinch, for instance, if your main components in your rig for whatever reason have broken down, you've sent them off for RMA and you need something to get you out of a pinch and you have a bad power supply lying around, you have an old motherboard, a CPU cooler that doesn't fit, then this may get you out of danger. Just keep in mind, if you decide to do that, seriously, don't overclock your system. And also while we're at it, if you smell something bad coming out of your system, even if it's a decent power supply, you have the best of the best, seriously, turn your system off straight away find out where the smell is coming from and stop using that part, or you may have to fix something. Something may be shorting out. In the past, I've had one of these cheap power supplies completely fry on me. And while I was actually in this room smelling these bad fumes for about half an hour, I then proceeded to vomit. So it's actually a really bad experience. One that I've been through firsthand. So anyway, guys, I was actually surprised that we could hit 4.5 gigahertz on a terrible power supply, budget cooler with no mounting system, zip tied onto a budget motherboard. However, I didn't stop there. I wanted to start gaming on this machine, especially with the 4.5 gigahertz overclock. So I decided to add in the 650 Ti boost, and it was then I had to use a splitter cable, and this is the two SATAs to one eight pin that can actually turn into a six pin. They're actually very handy cables to have, especially if you're using some server grade power supplies that only contain six pins. So I'll put a link for these cables in the description below. I always recommend them. I have about 10 on hand, because I do use a lot of budget power supplies. They're actually of very good quality. And in this case, I used it, and at first, the 650 Ti would not boot up. I was actually quite surprised. Dropped in a 660 and then it booted up and then I put the 650 Ti back in and it was at this stage that it booted up for some reason. So I decided to do some gaming stress tests and of course the first game that came to mind 
was Crisis 3. This thing does tend to max out a power supply for regular gaming usage. It's actually a very accurate number and does use more power than a Fire Strike combined benchmark. The only game that uses more power than Crisis 3 is Mafia 3. But in ways, I only consider Mafia 3 one of those terribly optimized games that's just a bridge game until Rockstar decided to release the next Grand Theft Auto sometime in 2025. Anyhow, I started playing Crisis 3 at 1080p high settings. The frame rates were terrible, there was frame spikes. The 650 Ti boost just couldn't simply handle Crisis 3 at 1080p. But on that note, we did score up to around 165 watts power draw from the wall. So I was actually quite surprised that some combo like this, again, on this terrible power supply, was actually doing quite well for wattage. Because something like this wouldn't even be 80 plus rated, it'd be something in maybe 70% region. So that did a good job of using little to no power. But when we decided to change over to a game, PUBG, I know people would want to know, how does the 650 Ti boost run on PUBG? Well, the answer is actually quite terrible. And since I recently tested the 660 Ti, that was really good. That could run PUBG at 1080p very low at around 60 FPS. The 650 Ti boost, however, could only run this game at 720p with around 40 FPS at best. So I was really surprised at the differences between these two graphics cards. And that's why I always recommend getting more CUDA cores over VRAM, for example. The stream processors should be your main concern when you're buying a graphics card. Of course, VRAM is important, but the stream processors are always the most important thing on a graphics card. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick video on terrible power supplies and they can get you out of a pinch. Just keep your nose ready and your sensors ready to go in case something happens and only use them if you absolutely have to. If you've got to check some business emails and your main computer, as I said before, is getting sent off for apparel, it will tie you over until you can get something decent. Or of course, if you're just using a really low powered system, something like a home theater system that only uses around 50 watts, then something like this should be fine since it's not getting stressed at all. Though with that, I was actually happy this build did turn out okay. I was expecting the power supply to do a little worse than it did. It actually didn't do too bad in general nothing blew up though again when i did get into some serious overclocking i could smell a bad odor coming out from the power supply so that's the start of something bad generally if you smell that warning start tuning things down if you are overclocking on a terrible power supply and let me know in the comments section below have you had a bad power supply blow out on you in the past or have you had to rma even a good power supply love reading your comments and thoughts as always and on that note i was honestly surprised with today's combination, terrible power supply, zip tied cooler, budget motherboard, 4.5 gigahertz on the 2500K, and it did so whilst actually remaining stable and still able to play games like PUBG. And then I added the graphics card in there, the 650 Ti, and it still didn't blow out on me. So these budget power supplies, although I highly don't recommend you get one and be careful with them, they can tie you over if you are in a pinch. Just don't overclock like I did today.